So we're just going to get right into it. So these are the buttons that I got. This is the 15 millimeter. For some reason, they're not in, or they're only in metric sizes, but let me get one out. I haven't even used them yet. But this is what they look like. I even used bigger than this. I want to say this is like a in half inch. So I'm going to be using this. And what I like to do is this is a pair of bell bottoms. Excuse my seams didn't line up there. But anyways, I like to put it right on the seam, like around here. And I'm going to place it there. But first, I'm going to get my machine all set up for anyone who might have this same model. I'm trying to do more beginner, like super beginner friendly. Um, so hopefully y'all are okay with that. You can skip around in the video if you just need to see the actual sewing of the button. Okay, so I'm just about to thread it. Um, pro tip, if you move this toward to the right, this is what threads or not threads this is what fills up your bobbin but if you move it to the right then your needle won't go up and down if you have kids or you know anybody who's going to be messing with your machine um that's just like a safety tip but i'm gonna move it back towards like sewing mode i guess you'd call it i don't have any other thread besides my serger thread so you just place it here sorry for this angle it's not the best and i'm just going to hook it under and then follow the little diagram, go down and up, and you want to hook it onto there, go back down, and let's see if I can zoom in here for y'all. My nails are coming off, so excuse <laughs> that, but here you just hook it back there, and it comes with an automatic needle threader, so I just place it on top, kind of hook it under here. Oh, that's, this is focusing and then you push it and then you hook your thread there's like this little tiny tiny hook and it'll thread your needle for you you can do it old school and just thread it as well but okay that is as far as threading goes and the bobbin same thing you just follow the little diagram to make sure that it works so for the button i'm going to do the button first and then we'll move on to more basics of knit fabrics I like to use my, or I like to set it on one, which is just a straight, or not one, sorry. We're going to set it on four, which is just a zigzag stitch, small zigzag stitch. This one for the button. And there's actually a little lever in the back. Let me see if I can show you. This, this table is a little wobbly, so sorry about that. But there is a little lever back here. And this is what powers your feed dogs, which is what feeds the fabric. I'm going to turn that off so that they aren't moving. All right, let's go back. So now here we go. We have our zigzag stitch and we have our feed dogs turned off. Now I'm going to get my button, or actually I mean my pants kind of line it up to where I'm going to be placing the button making sure that I'm not catching anything else I have a tag make sure to put your tag up if you have it make sure the front of the waistband isn't catching anywhere okay and I'm going to kind of see where I want to place it yeah that, that's good I put my there's this little lever here I put it down just so I can place my button underneath and this is the tricky part I like to pull Put, pull the lever a tiny bit and try and get this button in there. It's not working, so let me try and just set it up to where... What you want to do is set it up to where the needle is going to hit it, if that makes sense. So I'm just trying to get my... The two little holes where the needle... I mean, where the... Of the button and try to get it set up to where the needle is at. Okay, that looks like about right. And then I use my hand wheel. This, I'm going to turn it towards me and see that the needle is going inside the hole, the first button hole. So that worked. And then I'm going to hand crank it again and try and hit the other one. If it successfully hits both, then you can just push with the foot pedal now and go back and forth 
and I would do it slowly just in case the button moves a little bit, but it shouldn't shift. And then once you get more comfortable, you can do it faster. But we're in no rush right now. Then I'm just going to push this button. This is the needle up button. And I think I'm missing some scissors. Let me go get that. Okay, now all I'm going to do is take everything out from under and kind of leave my threads long. Because what we want to do is tie our threads in the front and tie the threads in the back. Some people, I think, um, fish the threads out, but I don't, then move them all towards the back, but I don't want to do that. But just make sure that you are tying just a simple tie. Whoa, I don't know if you can hear that. My stomach's like <laughs> growling. <laughs> um, anyways, so we're going to tie this a few times and do the same with the back and then just cut it really short. It's not really going to look bad, I don't think, since we're not putting these threads in the back. Plus the palm, I mean the fur palm, is going to be right there. So I'm going to just tie the other, the back side real quick and then I'll show y'all how to do the loop, the loopy loop of <laughs> the tail. Okay, almost done. I have my tail right here with me. So this again is another palm, fur palm. Fur pom pom from Amazon. Don't search bunny tails because then you'll get some adult items. <laughs> so just make sure you're searching for fur pom pom, faux fur pom pom on Amazon. And then I just hook it on. And there we go. You can't really see it. Sorry. Let me move this back. But that's what it looks like. And of course, whoever. The owner, I mean the parent, can fluff it up if they want. I hear blow dryers are good for that, but that's it basically. And then, of course, they can remove it if they need to. Get in, a, get in the car or whatnot. Go to sleep. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever they're doing, they can remove it. So now, I'm going to head back to the sewing machine and some of our basics for sewing knit fabric. Now, I just have some scraps here. Um, I accidentally cut some extra sleeves, but I have some scraps of, this is rib knit. I work a lot with rib knit, so we're going to do some basics for this. And I also am going to grab a double brush poly scrap. Okay, this is my double brush poly, just so y'all know. Anyways, now I'm going to show you all my biggest tip for sewing with knits. It is this walking foot. Um, my machine came with one. But I lost it, so I had to order another one. Again, from Amazon, just search walking foot and make sure that your model is in the description of the product just so that you know it's compatible. What we're going to do now is install this. Okay, now I also lost the tool that came with this, but I just use a key. And we're going to turn this. See, it came right out. We take our presser foot off. And make sure you don't lose that. <laughs> and now we are going to fish this in from the back. And I've learned that you really have to take this screw out for it to be able to fit in there. So let me just twist it out more. And then it should slide in. Okay, there we go. And then you just tighten it up. Should be easy. Oh wait, it's already messed up. Don't be like me and mess up. <laughs> so I forgot that we need this little U-shaped hook to go here. Hopefully you can see it. Let me get a better angle. This U-shaped hook is supposed to go in here. So let me un-tighten this again. Oh my gosh, I keep forgetting which one. Lefty Lucy, y'all. I keep going righty tidy. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> we're almost there. I am so sorry, y'all. Okay, so we're going to put it in, but make sure you hook it here and hook it here. All right, hopefully that makes sense. Now we're going. Now we're back on track. Hopefully. Yes, we're back. 
that can actually just make sure that it's pretty tight in there okay now how is this helpful so the bottom of this has little rubber grips and then we have our feed dogs which i'm going to turn back on remember the lever in the back push it okay there so that's my biggest tip for if you're struggling with mitts and now i'm going to make sure that i'm grabbing my threads here okay we're going to push the rest of back so now my favorite uh what's it called stitch to use is number three and i just leave it at that i don't adjust the length or width on anything i leave it at three and my tension is usually at three sometimes i play around with four but i just keep it there if you're struggling what i would suggest is playing with the tension you know go all the way from zero up to nine and figure out which one's gonna work better so now i'm going to do like a little test sew and here is our seam allowance we're going to do a one inch seam allowance just for uh i was gonna say shits and giggles but <laughs> wait okay i'm going I do want to note that the walking foot kind of slows things down, but it shouldn't be that slow. So now let me show you at a faster speed. I was in the two. And you're still able to backstitch and everything like that. So now let's go back. And you see that? I mean, <laughs> sorry. It's not focusing. Okay, there. And then you can play around with it. It's super sturdy. Like, this could have not been better. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to show you with the double brush poly. With this, I would even suggest if you're, like, super struggling, like, your machine will not accept it. It's like, what are you doing to me? I would suggest getting some tissue paper, but I don't have any. All you would do is put the tissue paper first and then your fabric. And let me do this right sides together. So again, I'm just going to do a test for y'all. Make your backstitch. Um, you should be backstitching before you start and once you're done. But again, here is that lightning bolt stitch. And here's what it looks like. Pretty, pretty sturdy. If you want this to be less noticeable, you could always do matching thread, but it looks like we might need to up the tension here a little bit. But for our purposes, that looks good. So let me think if there's anything else I want to add. Um, another stitch that I see recommended a lot is number two and then number four. With number two, I I don't personally like it just because it does take a while. I mean, it's three stitches, three rows of stitches. And then with number four, I prefer number three because it mimics that straighter stitch. You know what I mean? Like, it's pretty straight. With a small zigzag, I still feel like you get those big gaps. I don't know, maybe that's just me. But that is how I work with sewing and with my knits. So if you ever watch my tutorials and you're like, man, I don't have a serger. Hopefully this will work for you. And then let's do a hem. So I had a request as well to do a hem. So let me grab my other... My other sleeve let's pretend that we want to hem this so actually what i'm going to do first is sew it down and this since this is a sleeve i'm going to sew it down to the side exactly the same way that i showed you in this test strip and then i'll be back to show the hem okay so another tip is if you are sewing with your sewing machine you could see that this seam allowance is pretty thick it was about a half inch five eighths if you want to be more accurate so what i'm going to do is trim down this seam allowance now and try to get as close as i can but obviously not too close 
because we don't want to mess with what we just sewed down. So I'm going to just trim this area. Now we have less bulk if you want <laughs> if you want to call it that. But I've also seen some people try to mimic a serger stitch and they will go over with one of these overcast stitches like number five, number four, number nine, number seven. Any of those that um would create a sort of serger look. You could do that as well, but I'm just going to trim it. Um you could do a better job than me, sorry. So now I'm going to hem this sleeve. And I'm going to use the same stitch, but I'm going to try to get as close to the raw edge as I can. So because this is a bigger foot, this walking foot, I'm going to, what's it called? I'm going to sew from the front, but you can also sew from the, the wrong side. Actually, let's do that. So I'm going to flip it right side out and we're going to sew it from the wrong side I mean looking at the right side but it's like the inside if that makes sense and I'm going to try and aim it as close as I can but I don't want to mess up and somehow go off so I'm just going to go around here there isn't a line for this but you can make one if you want with a sticker or something. And I'm not stretching it either. You can adjust as you go. It's kind of getting thicker over here. And if you see your fabric kind of moving towards the right, I just kind of like to adjust everything back. Almost there. And then you just want to meet up to the starting point. Now this is where I'm going to backstitch. Sorry if I didn't mention it earlier, this is the backstitch button and this is the lifting the needle button. <laughs> okay. Now you can trim your all your threads because we overlapped and we backstitched, so it should be very secure. And this is what it looks like. I tried to get as close as possible. But that is a simple hem. I did do the lightning bolt stitch because we do want to make sure that we have stretch with this, you know what I mean? So that is basically it for this video. It is very possible to make some beautiful garments with your sewing machine. Everything that you need is right here, right here. Um, hopefully that was helpful. If there's any additional things that I forgot to cover or some more questions that you have, do let me know. But I would be very happy with this and you should be too, hopefully. So that is it for the sewing machine basics and how to sew on a button. I'll see y'all in the next video.